Judge Judy laying down the law on crime-ridden blue cities and their radical DAs. I did. A small group of people who had very loud voices created a scenario where bad people got rewarded and the victim got punished by the system. When you have elected district attorneys who don't know what their job is, they should go find another job, fill ice cream cones someplace, but don't ruin cities. Fill ice cream cones someplace. Well, it looks like Portland soft on crime district attorney is about to be slinging soft serve at his local Dairy Queen. A tough on crime former Republicans on track to defeat far left Portland DA Mike Schmidt. Are you deep down jealous of Judge Judy? Because when people say judge, they know it's really Judge Judy. Jesse <laughs> oh, I've got a line. I've got a line, and I want to have to eat it later. <laughs> oh. Judge. Okay. Come on, you. Do it. Do no, it. I'm no, not don't, tell, don't not do that, Harold. No, I'm not oh, doing it. Yeah. Look, look, Judy was a family court judge, and um, she does speak the truth. Uh, but in the end, everybody knows what the problem is and what needs to be done. And Multnomah County in, in Oregon is one of the wildest liberal counties. And the truth is that uh, George Soros's DAs are losing left and right. You got Chesa Boudin in San Francisco. You got Kim Gardner in St. Louis and Kim Fox, who got rid of Jesse Smollett uh, in Chicago. I mean, these people are halfwits. They don't know anything about prosecuting. They don't understand what their job is. And they just want to bring people out of jail and not prosecute arrests that police make and certainly not initiate their own arrest. And hopefully this is just a change, irrespective of what she says, these elections, uh, where people are understanding that their safety depends upon the, the DA who's in charge of their county. It does make me feel better that liberals in liberal cities are saying Soros DAs are too liberal for us. Get out. I agree. Two things. First, I agree with Judge Judy on how she resolves cases on television, and I agree with her here. Uh, Judge, you're right. We've got to figure out ways in which to uh, reform cashless bail. You've got to penalize people and hold people accountable for crimes. Um, I think what's happening in Portland, it looks as, like, it looks as if the person, the race hadn't been called, but it looks like the, 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 the Republicans in, in front by 11 to 12 points. Yeah. Wow. Uh, that's, that's a good thing. I could, have, I could easily have envisioned myself, based on what I know about that, voting Republican uh, in Portland because crime is such an important issue and public safety is an important issue. So I think it should be refreshing for everyone who cares like we care around this table, people who've watched us talk about this, that our system works, the electoral process works. People are not going to continue to elect uh, people who coddle criminals. And in Portland, we have our first domino, our first, um, uh, the first example of that in a long time, and as we, as we find ourselves living in this awful and avoidable era that we live in today, of voters saying, who come from an area that may be a little more Democrat than not, saying we want our communities cleaned up and we want public safety treated as a priority. So I'm, I'm relieved and refreshed by this. I am relieved and refreshed as Thank well. You. I like being refreshed. Dana, in a lot of these states, the governor has the authority to just say, hey, DA, you're done. And I'd, I'd be also refreshed if that would happen at least once. We need some refreshing. And Kathy Hochul, the governor of New York, should absolutely do something. Yeah, shower. So I texted Greg <laughs> earlier today. I walked about a mile up 8th Avenue today because I'd go from one place to the next. And I'm walking because it's hot outside now. It's warm. You're walking. In, in a day, from the rain to the sun, it is a disaster outside. Everybody has come out of the shelters. And I'm not talking, we're not talking like the migrants who are there saying, can you please help me in the kit? Like, they're there too. I'm talking about doing drugs everywhere, lying on the street, acro lying across the sidewalk like this with people stepping over them. And then you had people on the city bikes riding the, the wrong, wrong way. way on the street, causing a traffic jam. The quality of life is a disaster. And I'm, I, I, I actually just watched all this lawlessness. I called it 101 ways to lose my life on my way to hmm. Pilates today, which is a great <laughs> way to help your life as well, just as a little tip. Um, and somebody like Krasner, for example, yeah. in Philadelphia, like he was one of the DAs who was funded by the George Soros effort in order to try to make sure that these types of DAs ended up in these cities. 
And now what do we have? It's not just New York. I'm just saying I was a one woman <laughs> focus group today and it is really bad. You know what I thought I would do to be safer? To get on the subway and take the subway from there to there. That's how bad it was. Greg, did you notice any junkies on your way to Pilates? Well, I'm one of them. No, th but this reminds me of the thing. Remember I said to you a while ago, there's only two kinds of people on the New York City streets. Yes. Homeless men and women running to Pilates. That is all that you see in New York. Portland voters fired a Soros-funded DA and replaced him what's called an adult. That is a Republican gun owner. That's what you call an adult. The difference between adults and children, i.e. leftists, is that adults understand incentives and cause and effect. The previous DAs ignored incentives and that and they incentivized criminals and the city collapsed. They didn't coddle them. They cuddled them. And they still wouldn't stop. So now you're seeing dad brain return and the left wing brain exposed or the lack of a brain. But this is a big lesson for every in every when you look at crime, immigration, identity politics, you see a pattern emerge without a self policing mechanism, a governor within a party, the entropy of disorder unfolds continuously with crime thanks to no cash bail and decriminalizing theft it went in one unstoppable decline immigration demonization of border policy you see a decay in one direction identity politics through the fallacy of the victim mindset we have grown men identifying as women in women's sports and in women's prisons so what do they all have in common there's no governor. There's no restriction. So I think we can agree that Dems without Republicans leads to anarchy and suffering. Mm -hmm. They need to work together. I can understand that why people think Republicans are too harsh. But you cannot we cannot trust you on your own, <laughs> Democrats. Look what you're doing to this country. Yeah, Harold. If, 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 <laughs> if Republicans would give women freedom and go to do what they want with their doctors and Democrats would focus on crime and border, we really have a great thing. You think it's just about country. abortion? I disagree. No, no, but I'm saying no, but you just outlined things that Democrats don't, that, that voters, mm -hmm. and I, I don't necessarily disagree with the you. The first you look at, order of government is the protection of its people. Freedom. Period. End of the story. Freedom is the first thing guaranteed in the Constitution. Give, give women their Safety freedom. She said period. You can't talk after yeah. that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.